And we are back. Had an awesome lunch with my pastor. So excited about what God is doing in our church and how all the things we're learning here at the Swan Factory. Well, maybe not all the things. Um, a lot of them are applicable outside and uh, relevant to the clients we hope to get, assuming we survive long enough to have clients. I guess that's one encouraging thing. I feel like there are people out there who need our services at the Swan Factory um, that probably can't get that kind of help anywhere else. And I feel like God's brought them to us for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what, I don't know when, and I don't, but it's, it's encouraging. It feels like there's going to be something that survives. You know, even if it's an empty contract waiting for a gap in our schedules to fill it. Mm -hmm. uh, but th there's at least a hint, just like there was, you know, before Easter with Jesus. There's hints that this is not the end of the story. Mm -hmm. um, but we have no idea what. So anyway, enough morbid, joyous talk. Let's just talk about code. Cool. <laughs> yes. All right. Um... I actually just got uh, the first syntax spec to pass. Um, so this one right here, and I did push it. Um, Yay. Too yeah. Um, no, it's still in the syntax branch, but we can merge that as soon as this starts really working. Um, but yeah, so it, let's see, I'll show you, oh. So on the off chance you disappear before that happens, can I assume that whatever the latest branch is, is uh, that's been committed at least will not make things worse? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. I, Ernie, I promise that I will make a commit to master or send you a text message or something to let you know what's going on. Okay. If, we, if we're going to go have a baby... I promise to not just disappear entirely. Okay, fair um, enough. I will at least send you a text message and say, "I'm we're leaving you to the birth center. This is the latest branch, or something like that. Okay, not a problem. Just want to make sure we have, you have as little as possible to worry about when you're out the door. No, it's good. I just, But I also want to make sure that you know that I'm not planning on just ditching. And, okay. So long. Deal with it. I'm having a baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, here's our spec right here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let me show you actually this. Let me show you the tree. Um, so I'm in Swan, your tree source. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Uh, I love that utility tree. It's awesome. Oh, yes. Um, so here's um, here's my tree mm -hmm. inside the syntax folder. Um, I have. One file called element.coffee. Um, let me show you that. Uh, syntax element.coffee. This is the one that wraps. Um, this this one this is the one that wraps a function. Uh, that either will that iterates through every element it has to check for a match, and if it finds one, will return that element. Okay, so you're doing this. For simplicity, just as pure JavaScript rather than trying to create a world and use the iterator. Uh, oh, a world of elements? Right. I didn't even think about that. Okay, yes. So the, this, is a, uh, this is not essential. This is just my bias. Is, uh, and uh, it's worth explaining why, right? What, uh, what I expect to be doing, which I'm not sure if... There's two possible ways that this will end up being useful. One is we actually build the whole thing out and we start writing swan code. Mm -hmm. um, that would be awesome. I don't know how far we can get in whatever time we have or whatever time I have. The second way it's useful is that I would love to be able to figure out a, a more loosely coupled workflow for building SSK. Okay. And one way that I hope to do that is by building out this swan runtime that's been sitting in my head mm -hmm. and seeing if I can use that to create composable monads that we can string together. And so what I, I'm, I'm very interested in the question of, does the primitives we've created on world suffice for us to do all these things or not? It is not urgent, and if this is working well for you, I'm not saying you should stop and rewrite everything. I'm just sort of noting that fact. I mean, it's very, I mean, that's literally 
this is right here. Mm -hmm. That's the elements file. I mean, and and white space is just as simple. Right. Yeah. But the the the, the um, yeah. So anyway, it's fine to do it this way. The the question is, can we do it in one line if we have the right semantics in our world? And that's a question I can just explore later on my own. It's not, uh, I don't want that to become a blocker for you. Sure. sure. Okay. Um, anyways, yeah. So, so element is a function that will return either the, uh, the appropriate element for that character. Oh, I did want to have just one point, just to make sure. The way we've defined sub, we could also do unknown element equals element.sub type unknown element, right? Uh... Let's look at sub. Um, yes. Yes, we could. Which actually would be, I think, a little semantically clearer, too. Yeah. It would. Okay. Um, let's make sure that's still working, though. It's still working. It's, yes, you're right about that. If the next one, you can do element uh, dot sub. Say what? You can also do that in the the return. Yeah, you're right. Good point. I like it. That actually is better. And so elements is, okay, a file with... Elements is actually just this, is just a dictionary. So CSON or whatever? Yeah. Um, dictionary that has references to each file. I would like to probably include, like, find maybe a node module that'll let us... I've seen them where you can require a whole directory and then, like, assign... Oh, yeah. ...object in an object, just the name and then the... The, the actual require. Right. Um, so that's something that would be nice, but this is just working for right now. Sure. So it has white space. So this up here, um, and this now looks really confusing. Um, too many indentations, or...? Um, yeah. I was also wondering whether the name spawn would work better than dot sub, but that's a... Uh... Um, it might be, yeah. Um, it, it very well might be. Yeah. Um, and so we could change that. But anyways, um, so, so element is a function that takes a swan car and returns either an element the appropriate element or the unknown element. Um, those are both working. Um, and then the way we use it in syntax, it's very simple. So do just sends world.out.do element this car. Mm -hmm. And that's... Yeah. And that's working. So the Great. spec here checks against a space to do white space. And then a uh, random Unicode element, and it returns unknown element. Okay. And then uh, we could... Um, so since that is the white space one, so do we even need... Um, I guess we can decide whether we need other specs, but I think that's sufficient for now, certainly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, these, like... So these, I mean, all of these syntax or these elements are very easy to define. Right. Uh, yeah. They, well, they are now because they don't have to do anything other than be passed out. Once they actually have to have some behavior associated with further future uh, things, then we'll have to um, make them more sophisticated. Right. 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 I. I mean, just the the element definition. Right. This is the element definition here. Yeah. Um. So those, um, I, I can write those up. Um, I did go with the array matching like we discussed instead of using regular. Oh. Okay. Um, because it seemed more explicit and more clear. Mm -hmm. And 
almost sort of dog foody and that we don't have regular expressions in Swan yet. So, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, it seemed like the right thing to do after the conversation that we had. Yeah, right. And the interesting thing is, if you threw a uh, new world in front of that, this code would probably still work. Uh, what do you mean? If the model dot experts equals new world. No, no, on the same line as module dot experts equals. Yes. That would possibly still work, right? Uh, yes, it would. I don't know if that's good or bad, but that that was just interesting to me. So yeah. we have that nice transparency for for things that are the things that are just dictionaries where we're not calling do uh, or anything else. If they're passive. It works. In the future, I think they probably will become active, so we have to worry about it, but yeah. for now, it's... Uh, okay. All right. Cool. Great. Um, yeah. So that's that's where I'm at. Cool. Do you want to take a look at the Lexer spec? Um, uh, can we define a few more elements first? Sure. I feel like our Lexer will not be able to do anything yet. Um, Oh, actually, yeah. no, there is actually something very important. Actually, no, we can do it, we can do the most important thing first with just white space. Okay. Okay. And then um, like an hour or so. Oh, so. okay. Okay. That's fine then. Yeah. Um, I think that that'll because uh, the thing that we have to do is that given an element, we then actually do have to define what our do does, or or what what is our do do? It's going to get very scatological quickly. Um, I really want to try and make a Lex Luthor pun, but I just couldn't find one that I wasn't uh, going to regret. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. My syntax spec. Um, let's talk about the lecture. Um, then I'm going to just push this and merge it. Oh, yes, please. Um, Uh, in the name of time, we'll just we'll just roll on ahead. Okay. <laughs> since I knew it was working on. Uh, since I know it was working on my machine. Okay, so uh, there we go. Now we can get back into master. Um, and get check out create lecture. Awesome. All right. Then what do we have? Do we have any uh, any salvage from our earlier discussions in our Lexer spec or? Lexer um, I mean, we always have the uh, the pseudocode there. There we go. Yeah. Always have this. Okay. Paste that into somewhere where we can munge it. I wonder if I should go up into my flu bits so I can see better. Um, uh, yeah, I can get into flu bits. Um, All right. Um, this as source. Okay. Um, now we have a lecture. Dot coffee. Uh, sorry, coffee. Right. Okay. And I think. Um, 
we don't need the utils memoize business, so we can just start. Uh, wait, this we, we're, we're going to make this um, a. So here's a question: Is there a so this design pattern of a factory module exports? I guess you could just watch module exports equals function, but I don't know if that's is module exports at the end fairly idiomatic for CoffeeScript? Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll go with that then. Um, so we really need the, this uh, this pattern thing here. In uh, uh, sorry, you, what, you, you can't see my screen, can you? No. Wait, the, the 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 little. Can you see what I'm typing into Luxor.coffee? Does that show up in your browser, in your editor? Uh, I actually. Can you? I mean, I see. I think your cursor is moving. I pa I pasted in factory dot out in line twenty. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, there it is. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we do something like that now, right? Um, yeah. Um, I'll let you drive, then. Well, for the lecture. We don't want our up to be syntax, do we? No, no, no. I was just copying the boilerplate from the other oh, one. Okay. So let's do... So it'll realistically be... Um, right, so let's see. New Lexer.sub? No, sorry, it should be just Lexer.sub, right? Right, sorry. Um, so a Lexer. It's called with a element. Right. New element. You, so syntax. So, uh, um, syntax instance with elements since that's what we're, we're um, syntax instance with elements. What do you mean? Like, that file. We, we say syntax instance. We're now calling those things elements. Ah, uh, okay. Whoa. Okay. Um. Um. I'm not um, a big uh, fan of strong typing here. Okay. Because I want to be able to just arbitrarily mock in. I mean, because the goal is to have a contract that, as much as possible, is just based around do. Like it works. So plus. Uh, there's no good way to assert subtyping unless we add a, you know, has type where it traverses the hierarchy, which might be an interesting thing, but probably not urgent right now. Okay. Okay. Right. right, and these are world element. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I think yeah, at body becomes world dot body and all that. Are we doing underbars on our bodies? Uh, yeah, because we're not supposed to use it directly. All right, so we're leaving it as a. Mm, let's see. I can just change out this. Mm -hmm. um, is that right? I mean, just sort of. That should be. That should be. Okay. Right. That's. Um... Let's, let's talk this through. World body is null. We set it to the element. And then, yeah, then we call do on it. And um, we are running to an odd little uh, glitch where body is assumed to be a naked array uh, in our default implementation, but here we're making it a another world. Right. Which, if we don't call each or anything else, it's not a huge problem. It is a it is a it's a code smell. We'll just leave it at that for now. I think. Well, but each. Um... Each 
would wait. No, you're right. You can't. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Uh. Well, the one. Well, I mean, the simple thing is we just don't use body. <laughs> we just use value or something else we were using. Okay. Yeah, that would be a simple way to fix it. That's what we're using elsewhere for car underscore value. Yep. Okay. So we do that. Token equals loaded value to element. Um, then uh, if we do, sorry if you're asking, if I put the return on that line, the three lines you have at the top, could I make that a single line? Would it work fine? Return world of value because elements if yeah. value could value. What does it say without return? Without return element? Uh yes. Okay. I think that's actually a good thing. We'll see. So token equals we call it with the thing. If we get a token back, then we call it without. And then set the new element as the value going forward. And then when we have code for done, which we can have. So done would be the same thing with world. Um, I think when you call with done, there really is no other argument, is there? Um, yeah, I don't think we really do. How do we define done in God? Uh, yeah, done is a world args kind of thing. Yes, yeah, so we may as well have world args there because. And it just runs out dot done. Yeah. You want to put that in? Or should I? Oops. I'm going to go ahead and put a world, world comma args because it passes it through. Because I'm not sure if we. Well, we. I mean, we don't. If we don't use it. Um, I'm not sure if we know who all's calling it. And because it's chained, it feels like the sort of thing that should be. Okay, uh, what I mean is that it doesn't pass it. Like, this does not pass it through. Do you want to pass it through? Yeah, I think I want to pass it through. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this is an idiom. I think that's more consistent if we can do that. So, world value done R. Right for that. And. Um, Ah, right, good point. We define it as due, we call it as capital due. Right. All the other do's above are also capital due, right? Say again? The other dot do's above are also capital do's. Yes, they are. Okay. Cool. So that's what we were thinking about as it is. Then the two questions are the specs and the implementation in our element file. So the specs for the elements, and then specs for the lexer. Uh, OK. What kind of specs do you want in the elements? I guess the elements need to take a do, right? That's the issue? Well, right, but everybody's got to do uh, what it's got to do. But then we want to say that when we do it, that if we pass an element that matches, that, well, um, that it should, there's the, uh, there's the, I guess the next feels something like accepts, right? It accepts some array of types. And if the element accepts the array of types, then it just aggregates, it, it appends it. And then, so this is actually, yeah, so if we actually just put this into a lexer into, well, we need, the question is, is this in the syntax spec, the lexer spec, or an element spec? I guess it really goes into the lexer, describe an element, because that's where the behavior is. OK. You know, spec dot, uh, coffee. Sure. And that's coming under worlds. Okay, right. 
Okay. And then, so let me, am I messing up your screen if I look at different windows? Nope. Okay, as long as I don't type, it doesn't hurt anything. So Lexer takes an element, um, and um, all right, it, um, so Lexer, I guess it's created, returns a world. Let's see, should I just type this in there? Let me just type this in there. Sorry. It, uh, returns, returns a world. It accepts elements. It, um, are we using the word passes, throws? Mm -hmm. Completion um, um, and past unaccepted element, and it passes in token when called with done. And then the message is right describe element. It Ah, I see you. Two four character spaces. I guess we've already stuck with that. Oops. What happened there? Ah. Man bracket doesn't. Ah, where was I? I can find it now. It um, accepts forming elements. Ends. Relevance, it returns token for non conforming. Yes. Yeah. Seeing all that? Describe. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. We lost the body of the um so so once I get an element, right, from uh when I call element mm -hmm. uh, then the lexer is gonna try calling Do uh, element dot do another element, right? Right. So in one case, this is where this is one of these weirdnesses I've gotten used to that might still freak you out a little bit. Is in one context I treat it as a function, and in another context I treat it as data. Right. This is the essence of the fold. Right. The first element is the thing that you call everything. So the first element is treated as a function, and all the other elements are treated as um, data. Right, right. Um, no, what I'm, what I'm trying to understand is how the element interacts with that. Does the element append to its own body and then eventually have a body of, you know, a few characters and then somehow, like, who manages token creation, I guess, is the question. Right, the, element, the element manages, as far as the lexer is concerned, the element manages it. Okay. So there's two ways to do it, right? Either the um, the uh, element has a buffer where it buffers everything, and when it's done, it creates the token. Okay. The other way to do it is that the element creates a token, and the token does the buffering, and when the element realizes that, at the end, it, that it, it's time to kick the token out into the world, it just passes the token as it is. Okay. Uh, in fact, let's actually uh, describe token. Um, actually, no, we have to describe token when we get to the parser, I think, because 
it's not visible at this stage what the token is. It's just an opaque thing that gets thrown out there. Just like syntax throws an element, toss it, pa passes along an element, uh -huh. the element will pass along a token. Okay. And the... Um, yeah, and then... So, in fact, while we're here... Um, we can actually probably, by inspection, create um, uh, parser spec by analogy. Okay. Um, so the 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 path that we're going down right now mm -hmm. uh, us basically um, binds us to um, like a element being able to know what the token will be by the very first character. Yes. That is precisely the constraint I want to impose. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, just just wanted to throw that out there. Yep. Good observation. You know oh, how I love and, constraints. Wait, what? You know how I love... Uh, severe constraints. Right. Well, okay. No. Now, now it's now I'm understanding what you meant when you said um, that there were no keywords because that literally means we're not we can't have keywords. Yep. Because if you were to type something like "deaf," it would get matched as something other than a keyword because it would never get a chance to be the whole thing before. This is a philosophical point. With a, 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 this is a tenet of the theory: is that if you want to write something that's maximally readable by non-experts um, that then you have every character has a single significance. And the hypothesis is that this makes it much easier for computers to parse and probably makes it much easier for newbies to read. Okay. This character always means exactly this. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. I think uh, I'm just talking because I think I get it. So. Okay. Uh, um, script expression. What file are you working in right now? Uh, Parsrespect.coffee. Yeah. Which I have the wrong name in, so that's why it's confusing. There you are. No, no, I didn't Oops. accept that, one. that file get created yet. This was not showing up on your side? Oh, well, it is showing up on my side now. Well, it's not showing up in Worlds. Where did it show up as? That's weird. I have it showing up in my editor, but I have no idea where. I see it at the root level. Oh, okay. Can I move that easily? I can't move it. Left of an exercise for the reader. Turn the expression. Or the equivalent of XR there. Prince conforming elements returns no. Um, this is described token, right? Mm -hmm. right? The behavior of token is um, it. Uh, actually, no, there is something here then that we have to say describe. Token it and there's some I don't know if this is I'm in Lex respect now. Yeah. Um The, this may be something you have to check anyway when tell, you tell that it passes a token. Uh, the line 11 and line 4 are massively overlapping. We have anonymous viewer. Wow. <laughs> no, you scared them away. <laughs> These flu bit stalkers are really kind of weird. It, is kinda, it, it really is kind of weird. <laughs> Does this ever happen to you? Because I guess life with Google Hangouts, maybe. I don't know if anyone's on the Google Hangout. No, viewers. That's what's weird. 
Um, yeah. Uh, then, so parser spec, we describe the element. Let's go to and we describe similarly. I'm not attached to this organization. I'm just trying to get it all out of my head, as usual. I'll, uh, mm. So, and I know. Did I not? I did not fix this. Okay. Let's try this again. Return the parser. Return accept the world. Return the world accepts tokens. Passes expressions. Uh, terminal tokens or when called with done. Um, you know, group so line. What kind of terminal token? So when you get to the parser, you have to start worrying about all these things here. The lexer you can actually do this just test with white space. Because it should collapse white space into a single token. Right. OK. Uh, matching white space. Yeah. So that, right. yeah. No tabs. Yeah, tabs, tabs should throw a fatal error and punch the developer. <laughs> um, but, at least, but more precisely, that you know, what, it should, the space character should be collapsed, new lines should be collapsed, but they should not be collapsed into each other. They should not? No. I mean, that's a design detail, but that's kind of the way I envision it, is that you have a string of base characters. That means something. Having a new line means something different. Exactly what is TBD, but OK. Things. So it's not really, then the white space that I've written out isn't really correct, right? Uh, a space is different than a new line, and they should be separate elements. Well, that was actually a question that I uh, wrestled with in the, where was the syntax spec, is that what I was doing was giving the, these things uh, the same element but different bodies, right? So just like uh, open brace and close brace are the same type of element, they did, but they have different bodies. So there's two ways to do this. One is that you key off the type and then you key off the body. The other is that we actually make those all separate and distinct elements. And I don't know which is the right way to do it. Right. Uh, might want to make each of these distinct elements. So then key off body. Um, if you have a strong feeling one way, we can go with that. Otherwise, we'll just leave it like this until we actually run into it. OK. Um, I, I think I'm just not really quite sure what you mean. Well, so I can say, for example, I want all my new lines to be collected in, in, in one element and my slash s is in a different element and a different token. So if I have a sequence of these things, I want them to be separated. Mm -hmm. The question is implemented by having one white space element, and then I have sub-element types for slash and slash s, or when I actually have to make the decision, I key off of the body. Right, so the implementation of, uh, let's see, where's our element syntax? Um, do, I, sorry, do we have a white, oh, white space? Is, do we have something for white space? I'm not seeing the body. It's, what do you mean body? White space dot coffee, I'm not seeing any content. Really? Yeah. Uh, I am. OK. Look at your, let me look at your screen. Um, OK, weird. Um, right. So, ah, right. Our accepts for tokenization purposes is white space element. Um, OK, excellent point. So that means either we really should separate those two, or we have to have more sophisticated accept. It's probably better to um, um, make it explicitly different. Yeah. 
And do we have any way to express typing, or is that? And the way we have it now is these are all, uh, yeah, we need a separate file. A new line or something. Uh, yeah. Weird. Why do I not see that? Okay, now I see it. When I see the new line, I don't see the white space dot coffee. Weird. Very weird. Well, actually, in this case, you probably want it to be. Well, I guess maybe that works. Yeah. Actually, I mean, it could be. Do you? I mean, are you thinking of it being an array, like? No, no, no. I think no. I think it should be. It doesn't really matter, right? In this case, yeah. This is the correct thing. Is where it's precise. And, and yes, we are deciding that we're keying our accepts off of the element. That was the thing I was uh, fuzzy on. But keying off the element rather than the body that makes life way simpler. So, um, and that works fine. For the other ones, it doesn't matter as much because those are they accept nothing, right? Brace, bracket, parenthesis. They're not going to accept anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're just terminals. Um, so in fact, that case, you can make a terminal dot coffee. Um, well, we'll leave it that. Well, we'll worry about that later. I think. Oh, that's okay. Go terminal dot coffee. Why not? And just yeah. It's whereas match equals open close brace. So match is open. Or close brace. Right. I would actually do a string and split because I think the um, well, because in, in the it's going to be all of the the grouping operations and the separators. At this point, they all look the same. Okay. Semicolon, comma. Oh. All of those. Yeah, those are all terminals in the sense that once you hit them, game over. Okay. Except nothing. Okay. At this point, that's fine. That may be a bad decision later. I don't know yet. But since we don't know yet, we go yagni on it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So then, given those definitions, let's go look back and look at our uh, lexer and our parser. The actual lexer and parser? Uh, the, 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 sorry, the lexer spec and parser spec. Okay. Lexer. Where's the parser spec? It oh, root line field. Down here. Can you move that? Do you know how? Um, I, I can just create a new one here. Okay. Ah, that's where the... Uh, oh, I missed TextMate. Yes. The glory, the glory days of old. Yes. Back in my day! <laughs> yeah. It is on the list of crazy things I want to do is to write the ultimate text editor. Yeah. Uh, not sure how far down on the list, but it's on the list. Um, so yes, so parse respect. It turns a world, accepts tokens, passes expressions. A token is something that, um, yes, I have to look at the comparison here because I'm going to get confused. Um, Looking at uh, respect.coffee. So lex respect, the element appends, performing element. Oh, did I get these all mixed up? An element is append performing tokens. Turns null. No. It doesn't perform performing elements. An element takes additional elements. But in this case, we actually want. Um, it um, actually should be expression, shouldn't it? It uh, well, the expression is a control expression turns expression non-controlling token for terminal tokens. 
tools. And the phrasing is a bit off, but you get the idea, right? The, the point of the parser is to create expressions out of tokens. That's right. What it does is basically grouping. Um, so aggregate, aggregate. So you create, so just like a right, just like exactly the way that a um, um, terminal creates it. Now the um, um, okay, that's what for this. This is where it gets interesting. It contains sub expressions for groups. Um, it. Uh, here's a question. It should. So an error for non-terminated groups. Okay. This may be this probably might be at the like parser level, but expression cares. Well, let's go here for now. But um, yes. So at the lexer level, all terminals are the same. At the initial parsing level, all terminals are the same. At the sub-expression level, then we may want to distinguish between separators like comma and semicolon and grouping operators. Uh, for uh, badly terminated groups, uh, we one for the non-terminated groups, and then there's for uh, false, falsely terminated groups. If I see a something that I'm not expecting, mm -hmm. the way that I did this the last time is that when I started nesting, I extended my syntax. Um, okay, what does that mean? That means that I, in addition to the, oh, it's probably worth noting because I'm going to leave soon, is uh, to do this, uh, I had to extend the syntax when inside, inside a group, g after nesting. I added as a valid element. All right, so this is the one case where the syntax of the language is not purely context free in the sense that it's always legal to have an open parenthesis. It is only legal to have a closed parenthesis after an open parenthesis. Okay. Right? Which means that the, um, um, which implies a group forces a new context, new expression, and new syntax. Which is probably going to get a little hairy the first time you do it. So I don't expect you to do it. It's just be aware that, that there'll be a dragon there when we get to that point. OK. Um, but if you can get through the uh, rest of the parts in the lecture, that'll be good. But um, as long as we're on a roll, and now they know where this plus magic plus thing is. Ah, I really want to hit Command S, and it confuses my browser. Uh, I want to create a um, lexer parser its evaluator. I think so, right? Yeah, I spelled the whole thing. Um, so given that I've only 
And we're doing these, we're naming the stages, by the way, right? So each thing uh, returns the world, accepts expressions, passes value, and passed. Um, um, let's just be free to expression. Um, yeah, and Um, then we get to more some interesting semantics of it. Uh, you know, it uh, uh, returns it uh, returns values from n when evaluating property. And things like that. Uh, question? Mm. No, not right now. Okay. Uh, one thing I, I think at this point, it was at this point that I realized I really wanted numbers and math so that I could like add things and evaluate expressions and have them mean something. Um, <laughs> I think you can get away with, you don't need to do that if you have strings, um, which are hard to parse but easy to calculate with, since we already have strings. Um, just um, the string parser is um, going to be more interesting. The, uh, let me talk about that. Um, let's uh, just throw that in there now for documentation purposes. Is that I was imagining. I have I hate escapes and quoting, so having to quote escapes and quote things inside. So I use uh, asymmetric quotes for my strings, which is kind of perverse, but it makes things a lot simpler. Really? Right, because then you can nest. Interesting. It is nearly impossible to find a font, a fixed width font with mirror quotes, which would make this look much less perverse. Uh, though there's lots of proportionally spaced fonts with mirror quotes. Right. And also, mirror quotes are extremely hard to type. Well, on a standard keyboard, yes. But I mean, no, there, there, no, I mean, there are fonts where typing back quote and single quote are mirrors. Oh, 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 oh. So not mirror quotes, where, where the. Where the the, these characters are represented by mirror quotes in the font. I see, I see. But that, using that convention, uh, even though it's awkward to type the back quote, it eliminates a whole class of errors. And it also means you can trivially comment out a section of code by quoting it. Interesting. So it seems like it's, that's one that's probably worth the pain. Um, but that, that's, one of the tricky, that's one of the trickiest elements to do. Uh, if I do it like this, you don't have to worry about slash quote escapes as much, the, um, or even slash n, really, because mm -hmm. the parser, um, the accept is basically, it accepts everything except its, its uh, mirror, right? Right. Uh, so but that's advanced after we do the open and closed brace. Once we do those, this sort of thing should be relatively straightforward, except that that's probably going to be at the lexical, that'll be at the lexer level rather than at the, because it's a single token. Okay. Um, also, uh, because strings automatically concatenate, I don't need string interpolation either. Wait, say that one more time. The strings, uh, 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 strings uh, automatically. So you know, a uh, b is an expression. Depends.
right? The strings yeah. are functions too. Okay. And you can also do a bit like that, like that. You just find the expression any right, and so on. so. In fact, uh, that's how we call two S. Right? Give it a string. Anything it consumes gets stringified. Okay. That's a so that's the power of if you have the right conventions, you can get rid of a lot of custom syntax. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, so um, this is mostly just for is it, the specs are symmetric enough that I figured it's worth spelling them out now. Um, you feel comfortable with the lexer and the parser? Um, let me take one more pass over it. Just okay. Quick. Okay, you can drive. I'm not going to click. Just want to sure just look and see what. Let me make it easier to stay in sync. Um, so yeah, I'm just thinking about um, right. There's this concept of tokens and expressions that are created by the lecture and the parser, respectively. Yes. Um, and and so we we did agree, just to be clear, that it is the element should create the token. Yes. Right. And that the token should do the aggregation. OK. Um, the element creates the token, and then the token is passed on. Passed pending when the token is called. Passed pending token when called with done. What does that mean? Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm saying here I'm getting a series of characters, A, B, C, D. Uh -huh. And if I get a white space, that would create a token, right? That would instantiate the token and pass it along down the pipeline. Uh, but if I don't get a next character, all I get is done. Done is equivalent to an element, calling it with an element that never, um, uh, that, is, that is never accepted. And everybody down the line gets called done as well. Right, and a file always ends a token, ends an expression. Huh. Right? Okay, that makes sense. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Um, element. The patterns conforming element returns null, returns token. Contains all conforming characters. So the only thing that ends in expression are those terminal tokens, right? Right, because everything else is an identifier. Okay. Or a separator, or a um, white space separator, right? Right. Pretty much there's groupings, there's, there's terminals, there's white space, and there's identifiers. And we may add some syntactic sugar around infix operators, but it's not really necessary. Okay. And none of those things, yeah. So, right, the other thing is that really everything is an expression except for a very small number of terminals. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I get it now. Like yeah, you see how the the lexer, the parser, and the evaluator all look like more or less the same thing. Right. And if we're really good, and you know, this is actually something I've been wanting to do for a long time, is I wanted to write this thing in a way that made it transparent how you would write it when you're in Swan, mm -hmm. uh, because I was always doing it in Ruby idiom and then C idiom. And I learn more each time. And this time I feel like we're getting really close. That if we, after we build this, you know, somebody can come along as their intern project and we write the whole thing in Swan, and it should be easier. Right. With all the, the runtime's already there. Right. Um, and the idioms are close. 
<laughs> close. Okay. Right. Right. I mean, that's that. That's why I wanted our you know this uh, syntax thing. Uh, whatever syntax. It's not your screen. My screen. Syntax dot coffee. Uh, which I can't bring up for some reason. No, I don't say El Was it Elmic dot coffee? Yeah. It'd be nice if that was in each. Right? Okay. Or, because just for the, the the dog fooding aspect. Right. Particular, and specifically, I feel like our each. Uh, now, I'm not going to require it now for a couple of reasons. One is that it's it's not critical compared to everything else. Two, there's some interesting subtleties there, uh, which get into the nature of exception handling. Okay. Right, because this basically says stop iterating in the middle of a loop. Yes. Which is. Um, I mean, the way you, the way I would do it is that I always uh, I would just throw to the out parameter whenever there's a match and keep going through the loop um, and set a flag of some kind so that I know whether or not to throw the unloop. Right, it's, it's what you always did back in the C days. Right, is you you set a sentinel, I guess they call it, if, after you've gone through the loop and said nothing matched, throw an error. Okay. Uh, but, um... Oh, okay, I, I understand. So you could do it that way, and, um... It depends a little bit on how we want to handle... Actually, no, actually, the, the um... Because the do and done, you'd have to pass a central value between the... You set it in the do loop, and then in the done loop, you check and see whether or not to throw the end of the element. Okay. But an exercise, it's not critical path. Okay. Oh. Uh, but the next time you do a loop, see if you can use each. All right, cool. And then the bonus points, if we build all these things, say, oh, is there, in fact, a really generic design pattern that we can abstract away into our runtime or into a utility class? Yeah. Um, and maybe each and aggregation are the right things and everything else is actually the semantics that's different. But I don't know. And then we start adding more elements, we'll find more bugs. But if you can get basically, so that is it, the white space thing should evaluate, you know, it should aggregate the white space. It should uh, be considered an expression when it gets uh, uh, token, when it gets parsed. Uh -huh. So expression containing just, you know, your three white space characters or whatever has been passed in. And then when it evaluates, it should evaluate to nil. Right. And so you could actually go all the way through the pipeline with just white space. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right, for your wife's sake, I hope I don't see you on Monday. I know that last week is pretty painful. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, yeah, next week is the last week. I don't know, I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, yeah. But as I said, I will keep you updated. No problem. Thank you, Daniel. Get, uh, if you can give our love to me. Hang up here and uh, wait. See where are you? You still there? Yep. On your screen. Yes. Whew. Thank you. How are you feeling? Um, good. Uh, I feel like I said yesterday. Mm -hmm. In full tasks and getting some specs to pass made me feel good. Great. And. Do you feel like you have a, uh, I guess you don't have a high need for this, but do you feel like you have a sense of where this is going? Um, kind of. Okay. Kind of. Some of the mysteries, like why I have the Lexer, you know, operating in this weird way, is that it looks like, a, some of those things are becoming at least slightly clearer. Yeah. Yeah. But as long as they're becoming slightly more clear rather than slightly more confusing, we're on a good trajectory. Agreed. Okay. Sounds good. I appreciate you, Daniel. And um, I guess we should wish each other luck for the hired interviews, which will presumably start before we... Uh, actually, you're around. It'll, they probably won't review you for another week, so you probably won't be in this round. Okay. Um, I should be in the round there, though I doubt I'll hear anything before we talk next. Um, let me just pray for you now, because who knows what happens over the weekend. God, I just thank you for Daniel and for the partnership we've had and the incredible run we've had in the Swan Factory. Um, we're in bonus overtime now. We don't know if we're going to have next week, but I guess really in life we never know what we're going to have one day to the next. Thank you that we are um, 
that you made it so much easier for us to recognize that reality, that all we have is today and you and relationships that, that are built on you, and that's really all we need for joy. Uh, but we do ask for uh, Kelly that you would have a safe delivery. We pray for the hired uh, interviews uh, auction next week, that if it's your will for me to get a job, that uh, I would find the right one and that we would all have peace that is from you. Thank you for all you've done this week in our lives, in our church, in our relationships. And I thank you that you're on the move and awesome things are going to happen. I pray that we would enjoy your peace, enjoy our work, and that the next time we come together, we would have much to celebrate. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. Welcome back, Tiger. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Have a good one.